Welcome back to Anderson Acres. We're out here with Shadowfax and Arwen today because this is a follow-up to the video I posted last week. Remember, remember last week we talked about three things you want to look for and really check carefully before you put money down on that mini horse you've been admiring? Today we're going to cover the other three things that I think are really important. Okay? The first thing that I'm going to cover here is something that people don't always want to talk about, but it really is important. Okay, I want to talk about horse testicles. Sorry, but that's what we're talking about. Because, now, th first of all, this applies to boys only, because girls don't have them. It applies to boys only, and it only applies to stallions, because geldings don't have testicles. That's what gelding is. They remove them. So this only applies if you're buying a stallion or even if you're going to geld that stallion later, this is still an important thing to take note of. So there, hi. So there should be two testicles, okay? You want to check. You want to check or you want to have a vet you trust check. Don't take anyone's word for it because everyone assumes they have two. But you need to know, even if you want to geld the stallion later, because it is not uncommon for one of those testicles to not have dropped in minis. It happens. It doesn't happen all the time, but it happens often enough that I really feel like I should mention it if you're looking to get yourself a stallion. Hi, sweetie. Are you going to come under the fence? No? Fine. Make a decision. DK. Anyway. So... It does happen where one doesn't drop, or both don't drop, and you have a problem. If a testicle is retra retained, the stallion has to be geld gelded for his health, and so that he doesn't pass that on to his offspring. Because it's not a good thing, it is bad for them, and it's bad for you, and you just don't want it. Okay, you don't want a retained testicle. The surgery to geld a horse that has a retained testicle will be more expensive, okay? It's also necessary. That surgery will be more involved, it'll have more risk, it'll have more recovery time, and depending on your vet, they might want to do it at the clinic. Our vet does. Now, our vet typically does geldings in the yard. So if I want a horse gelded, he'll just come to the yard and do it. But if we're talking about a retained testicle, then I have to bring the horse to him and he wants to do it at the clinic, just because it's more involved. And that's fine. I, I completely agree with that. It's, it's a good idea. Okay? Just because something can go wrong. It's something you want to be aware of. Okay? The possibility of a retained testicle. Be, not necessarily something you have to avoid, but something you need to know ahead of time. Okay? If you don't check, the stallion you bought for breeding might be worthless because now he has to be gelded. Or the fairly cheap cost of gelding that you were counting on is suddenly going up quite a lot because it's a much more expensive surgery. So you do want to double check and absolutely make sure that if you are buying a stallion, he's got two descended testicles. I know it sounds like a weird thing to check, but you really should. It's really quite important. So the second thing today that I wanted to cover, and I talk about this a lot, height. You want to double check the height of the miniature horse you're buying yourself, if at all possible. <laughs> you're being weird. Chicken. Yes, I'm standing here, chicken. I don't think that chicken has a name yet. She's pretty, but I don't think she has a name yet. Yeah, you better run. She's just going back the way she came. Okay. Chicken. Anyway, <laughs> so if you're going to show or breed... You definitely want to measure the height of your mini horse to confirm yourself. You do not want to suddenly find out the pony you thought was 33 inches is actually 35. Okay. I'm going to be strange. All right. We're just being strange, everyone. Don't worry about it. Okay. So, you do want to double check. It's always risky if you're buying a horse under three years old because he hasn't necessarily reached his final height yet. And if they end up even just at 34 and a half, they may not be able to be registered. Just the way it is. 34 inches is your magic number. 
Remember, miniature horses are a height breed, and they are immediately disqualified if they're too tall. Okay? There's no wiggle room. If you're 35 inches, you're out of the show, man. Sorry. Now, he's really little, so he doesn't have a problem with that. But it's surprising how many minis will just kind of eke up a little bit. Because a lot of people breed for 33, 34 inches. So then sometimes it happens where a horse goes up to 35. No good. Um, remember that when you're buying registered horses and you're buying them young, some breeders will actually do a um, height guarantee where if the horse grows too tall, the settler will either buy the horse back from you or they'll offer a replacement. So you wouldn't be out money if you had that kind of guarantee, but it's still really sad when the pony that you fell in love with isn't going to be able to do the things you want them to do. So then you have to decide whether you want to keep them and not do the things you wanted to do or whether you want to... Um, don't do bad things, Jake. Make good choices. Or whether you want to keep the mini and kind of give up what you wanted or whether you want to give up the mini and continue with what you wanted. It's a hard decision and it's better if you're not put in that position. So double check the height, always. Check yourself if you can. If you're buying online, have someone you trust or a local vet or equine vet specifically, check the height, okay? Verify that height if you can. The final thing I want to talk about is probably the most important. I want to talk about health. So we talked about soundness and we talked about a horse's testicles. Those are both health related. But this one specifically, I want you to talk, to think about the health of the pony. You want to check the horse's health. So that specific pony's health. You want to check that he's not underweight or he's not overweight. Okay, you want him to be a good, decent weight. And you want to assess his environment and the general health of the herd he came from. It's okay to ask for updated pictures. If you're buying strictly online and you can't see the pony yourself, it is absolutely okay to ask for updated pictures. Let the seller know that you're not going to be annoyed if the pictures aren't perfect. Okay, sometimes that's why sellers don't want to show you updated pictures. Like, he's starting to be kind of wooly right now. There's another chicken. A Frodo. So he's a little bit woolly right now. And that's because winter's coming. So he's starting to get his winter coat. So that's fine. Let the seller know you're okay with seeing those pictures. Because sometimes uh, sellers think that if they show you the picture of the pony with the woolies, you know, he's all woollied up for winter, that you're going to back out. So let the seller know you understand that this time of year, he might be a little bit wooly. If it's not high summer, there might be some wooliness to the pony. Tell her you understand that he might be dirty from being out in the paddock, but you still want to see updated photos and you want to talk about the health of the horse and the herd. If you can, do a pre-purchase exam by an equine vet of your choosing. Try to pull this off even if you're buying online. It may be more difficult because you won't know vets in the area, but... Talk to people in that area, see if you can pull off a pre-purchase exam by a vet other than the vet the seller uses. Okay, um, vets are pretty ethical, but sometimes what happens is, especially if it's a distant sale, things can get a little wonky. So you definitely, definitely want to check out the health of that pony and see if you can get a pre-purchase exam by a trusted vet. Okay, it's really important. And I really do think you should do that. Pre-purchase exams cost a little bit of money. They are well worth it, especially if you're getting a horse that you want to show or anything like that. Now, remember, if you're getting a rescue, health may be a little bit questionable, but hopefully the rescue is upfront about that and will work with you to resolve health issues before you bring the mini home. Okay, unless you are a foster home for a rescue, you're probably not set up to deal with some of the health issues that rescue ponies can bring. But I still recommend rescuing a pony if that's what you want. If it's not, look elsewhere. It's important. So that is about it for us here today at Anderson Acres. We will see you tomorrow.